hostile interview round. A round which will decide your future in the desired company or your dream job. So nobody should take any risk while appearing for the personal interview round, be it an introduction to your profile or your past experiences. Everything should be beyond perfect. So to help you cover all the important points for the personal interview round and avoid all the glitches, we are here with a session. The session will include everything that a candidate must take care of while appearing for the final round. Now I would like to invite our Honourable Principal Sir, Professor Shiv Kumar Sehadev to enlighten us with his kind words. Please take over, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, all the participants, Ms. Nilu Jain, dear colleagues and dear students, a very warm good afternoon to all of you. Uh, you know that this placement cell has organized a series of skill development programs and you are attending these programs for the last two days. And today is the third one. And we all know that communication is a very important skill. And how to communicate effectively, efficiently. To tell us this, we have with us Ms. Nilu Jain. So I also thank her for spending time for my faculty and students. I'm sure that you all will enjoy the talk and you will immensely get benefit from this. Thank you very much. I will not take your much time. Have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for those kind and encouraging words. Now it's finally time uh, to invite uh, the speaker of the day, Ms. Neelu Jain. Ms. Neelu Jain is an entrepreneur, a postgraduate in HR, a certified business storyteller and an NLP practitioner. Moreover, she has 14 plus years of overall work experience and have trained 300k professionals in soft skills, behavior, outbound and leadership training and development. She is also the CEO and director of Emerge Finishing School, specializing in corporate readiness for educational institution. She has facilitated training programs for first mid senior level employees for HPCL, RBI, Access Bank, Wipro, Tata Interactive Systems and many others. She has been awarded with the Indian Achievers Award 2020 and 21 for the Emerging Company and HR Excellence Award 2021 from HR Success Talk. She has nurtured students from Xavier Business School, St. Xavier's University, Billa Global University, C.V. Ravan College of in Engineering, IHM, IMI and many more. We welcome you, ma'am. Without much ado, I request you to kindly start with the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. That was such a warm and lovely introduction. Thank you, Principal Sir. Thank you, Dr. Shweta, ma'am, for being here. And a big thank you to all the placement cell members who've made it possible. Thanks a lot. And I'm glad, honored, and happy to be here with each one of you. If the placement team members can quickly confirm, I hope I'm audible to you all. If that can be confirmed. Yes, yes, yes you're audible. Yes. OK, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Great. So everybody, uh, you know, it feels wonderful to sit back and listen to your journey being spoken from somebody else because it makes you feel like going through that time back in your life. You all are starting fresh and sure after X years of experience when somebody introduces you you'll also have that feeling of going through your profile, going through your years of what you've done so far. Thank you so much, uh, like I've mentioned, and let's move into this particular topic that I have been called for, which said communicate with clarity, where I'll help you to understand how do you master this one big elephant in the room, which is personal interviews. And I'm sure the moment you get these mails from your placement cell or from your training and placement department, saying you have a mock PI, there is something that happens to us within our you know, mind, body, soul, brain, and every part of our body. Something happens. The moment you sit in front of that chair, in front of the interviewer, something happens again. So why these jitters? What happens to us? How do we overcome it? I am going to share with you. So the way I've planned this particular session for you is that I'll, I'll share some tips and techniques with you over how do you master these personal interviews. Post that, I will also invite you for some practice sessions with me where some of you can take part and 
a lot of us can learn through the experience that we have with each other. At the end, I would be open to any questions that you might have, like, uh, you know, Kushi was also sharing the protocols. Please go ahead and follow them. During my PPT, uh, as I present to you, it's not going to be a one-way communication because the moment we say communicate, it becomes effective only when both the parties are involved. So I'll request all of you to raise your hand as and when you want to share the answer with me because I want to put it as interactive as possible so that you can benefit out of it and I can feel happy about making the session fruitful. If that is all clear with you and you want me to get started, give me a thumbs up. Let's also test whether your emot emoticons are working. Okay, great. Radhika has raised her hand already. Okay, that, that wasn't a, yeah, it was a question, but good, good. I can see your emoticons are working. Super, wonderful. So claps for you all for raising your hands and your thumbs ups. Okay. The first question, it's open to answer for anybody. The first question that I want to ask you all is the moment you think of this, I've named it as interview masterclass. The moment you think of this interview, what do you think happens here? What comes to your mind? Anybody? Um, let's do something. I think it will be too much for your placement uh, people to, placement cell to unmute you. If you want, you can use the chat also. Yeah, Dharia, anybody, if you want to unmute, somebody raise the hand. Let's see. Okay, two hand raise. Please unmute yourself, participants. You've been given the access. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, please. Interview, what comes to your mind? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Tell me. Uh, interview, when I thought of this word, uh, the panel of highly experienced, highly experienced person in that sector only who have achieved something in that sector only, interrogate us, communicate with us, and uh, examine us on many levels, like whether it is academic, communication in our uh, personality, body language, and uh, according to them, the criteria which they think we should be, uh, I mean, we should know about. Thank you. Okay, Gaurav, that was lovely. Thank you so much. Can we all clap for Gaurav, everybody? Great, amazing. When you said that, you know, it's a panel, it could be one, it could be a panel, asking us about our experiences, asking us about um, the kind of things that we've done. Of course, super. Gaurav mentioned a very, very important point that was, it's about us to share it with the panel members or with one person. Guys, I want you to break this word interview into two halves that you see over here. Yeah, I'll just highlight it for you. This particular place where you see interview. I want you to start looking at interviews from this point. It's actually an internal view of you yourself. And that is what you put forward in front of the other people. It's your internal view about yourself. Because in an interview, the interviewer is going to ask you questions about you. So it's all about how well do you know yourself? And then, of course, communicating that with clarity. That is what I'm going to help you to do today as well. How do you channelize this interview? Of course, knowing yourself is one step. Second of all, communicating what you know about yourself. So let's get into this journey of interview together, which Gaurav has also set for us very beautifully. And let's move ahead. I'm sure a lot of you young generation is on uh, this one platform where uh, Instagram, where this one uh, thing became very famous. Can anybody guess what this is? And I think the access is there. You can unmute and tell me. What is this? Very famously used on Instagram and I think Snapchat and etc. Any guesses? Boomerang. Boomerang. Yeah. Boomerang. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Boomerang. Now you all must be thinking I'm talking about personal interview, but why am I showing you a boomerang picture? How does this apply to an interview? Any idea, anybody? Any guesses, any thoughts? Boomerang, interview. 
what happens when you take a boomerang video? You show an action and that action keeps coming back to you. Or if you remember in our times, you know, we used to have this uh, frisbee. You throw it and it comes back to you. So what's this uh, boomerang in an interview? Yeah. You ask the questions okay. and get the answers first. Okay. So interviewer asks the question. You give the answer. And how does it come back? Well, the answer you gave the question from it only. That if you are telling the lie, telling the truth. Okay, great. You guys are thinking. Superb. Anyone else? When we share our experience and we are asked questions on that. Amazing. Superb. Who was that? When Pratham Shoki. Pratham. When, Superb. Thank you so when much. We answer, we, then we answer yeah, we yeah. Have the question from the answer only. Amazing. Super, you all are at the right thought process. A boomerang in your interview is applicable the moment the interview starts. Because the moment the interviewer starts asking your question, this is your answer. It gives shape to the interview. It gives the path of the interview. A lot of times students have told me that, you know, um, I was asked difficult questions or the interviewer was not interested to listen to me. My interview was too short. Or, um, you know, my other students, other colleagues, they were not grilled as much as I was grilled. To all of that, my answer is this. The moment you put the ball in the court of your interviewer, your interview is in their hands. The moment you understand this technique, you will be able to keep the interview in your hands. So let's understand this technique as two, three friends of yours have already shared. This boomerang technique is nothing but when your interview asks, when your interviewer is asking your question, you answer that. This is the answer. The next question with formed. This is the question you answer. This is your answer, another question, and another answer, another question, another answer. It's happening. This is how the boomerang works. Let's take an example, okay? Let's say the interviewer asks you why this course, maybe your bachelor's, master's, whatever you're pursuing. If the interviewer asks, why are you pursuing this course? Or what is the difference that has made to your life after you enrolled in this course? Let's say the candidate replies, I have become a new person, new outlook, and I understand the corporate world now. Okay. Let's say the question was why the scores and the answer that was given was I have become a new person. I have a new outlook towards life. I understand corporate world. So many keywords given out. Imagine if you were the interviewer. What would you ask next? What could be the boomerang? Anyone? What is it corporate world? Okay, superb. So you've said corporate world. Okay. Anyone else? What is the what's new your outlook? outlook before entering what the course? The what's outlook your outlook been? after the course? When, wonderful. What's the outlook before the course? What's the outlook after the course? And somebody was saying new person, I think, right? How have you become a new person? Can you explain? So see, this is where we lay out traps for ourselves. The question was very simple. The question was, why this course? This is our answer. We've laid out a very difficult trap for ourselves because the question comes as, what do you understand out of the corporate world? Now here, people get stuck because they start saying things which gets them into trouble, which maybe they are not even prepared to handle because they might have just thought about this one answer. What I want you guys to think about is, one answer leads you to another question, that question leads you to another answer. It's important for us to think in our head, if I'm asked this, what should I say? This is my answer, what is the possible question that I can be asked? The moment you apply and think and plan the boomerang approach, 
you are almost 90% ready with your PI. Like you guys rightly guessed, you can, your question can be, what is the new outlook? What do you understand out of the corporate world? And the trap starts. Maybe somebody says, you know, I have become confident and my networking skills has grown. This is this answer. Confidence has improved, networking skill has grown. What do you think can be asked next? Anybody? What are networking skills? Okay, Ashutosh, what are networking skills? What else? Anybody else? Anyone? How have you built confidence in yourself? Okay, how have you built confidence? Perfect. I can be asked about, tell me about a time when you applied networking skills or um, can you tell me about a time when you showed that your confidence really matters? I can be asked to justify it. And then my answer begins, right? So you'll notice why this course to where have I led myself to? If I can plan my answers, I can lead the interviewer to where I want him to go. If I want him to focus, him or her to focus on my internships, let me lead the person to the internship by using the right keyword in my answers. It's just like a Google search. You're hungry, you're looking for a restaurant, you type in the right keywords, you get the right results. You put in the wrong keyword, you get the wrong results. Same way, when you're asked a question, you put in the right keyword, you're leading the interviewer to the right question that you want him to ask you. Yeah, if this part is clear to everybody, give me a thumbs up so that I know because this is extremely important for you to understand. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Great. And um, I know this generation is very tech savvy, but I'll request you to write down some notes because you know speakers come and go. Uh, you keep having recordings, I understand, but all of this is right now fresh in your head. A little later, it will all evaporate because you all have so many other things to do. So please make notes of whatever you find important for yourself. And I'm sure before your PI, if you can just plan, practice and prepare, it will help you a long way. Let's take another example. This is a tricky one, okay? Uh, imagine if you're asked at a crossroad. Imagine you're at a crossroad, okay? One side of the crossroad, you find a bag of books, bag full of books. On the other side of the crossroad, you find a bag full of money. Your interviewer asks you, you're at the crossroad, you find on the one side a bag of books, on the other side you find a bag of money. Which one would you pick up? Let's do it real time, okay? Mm -hmm. Bag of books because I can turn the skills into money. Bag, Interesting. bag of money, then I can buy the books and then in turn, <laughs> and turn that into skills. That's the right thing to do, is it? Bag of money. Bag of money because mm -hmm. I can invest them in something to make more money. Okay. Great. A lot uh, of you are saying of, bag of money. Bag of yeah, yeah. Running for money. Uh, I would pick uh, the bag of money because I have been studying for the money all this time, right? Um, Interesting. I okay. Would, yeah. Um, I would pick bag of money, and you know, I so I can make more money, and you know, maybe do my investment and in, you know, take the stuff. Great, wonderful, amazing. So I won't say who's right, who's wrong. See, in interviews, there's nothing right or wrong. It's all about how are we channelizing our discussion. So the ones who said bag of books, uh, I think some, I heard two, three voices say bag of books. What do you think can be asked next? Bag of books will give me a lot of skills. What can be asked next? I think this was my Can you elaborate also. what kind of skills, you know, it will provide to you and how will it benefit you? Okay, perfect. Can you ask, tell me the, the kind of skills that can be provided? How will it benefit? Good. Can anything else be asked? Because I said books, I will choose books. What else can be asked to me? 
Will the bookish knowledge serve yeah. you alone? Okay, can the bookish knowledge be enough for you? Yes. I heard a male voice also. Anybody? Ma'am, I was saying that they may ask that the bag of books may contain books which are not of your interest. So mm -hmm. how may you take skills Good. from that? Great, great. So see, that's what we are need to think of. Okay. One question bases our answer can lead us to multiple questions bases the keywords that we have given out to people. Here, let's see this. I will choose the bag of books slash wisdom. Through that, I can sustain lifelong and can transfer it to others too. Value for books is may way more than the value of money. Very good. This was a real-time question that I had asked somebody for one of the organizations that I was working with in my previous experience. So this guy very smartly gave me exactly this answer. My next question was, okay, it looks like you value books a lot. Which is the last book that you have read? What do you think happened to the person? Have you seen this um, cartoons where you know you have these stars all around the head? That's exactly the expression that I was seeing in this person. No idea, clueless, never read a book apart from academics and maybe some comic books. So, you know, it's all about don't go with what you feel sounds good. I have to choose books because it will make me sound intellectual. No, it's all about being able to sustain. The ones who chose money, a lot of you said, you know, money because I can buy books. Absolutely fine. No problem with that answer. So please remember, you don't have to sound politically correct. You have to be able to sound what you can sustain in form of question, answer, questions. Clear with everybody? Thumbs up if all clear. All right. Superb. So let's move ahead with the final, final example, okay? Uh, or maybe the second last example. Salary expectations. I'm sure this is a question that keeps bothering all of you. How do I handle this question when I'm asked, what's my salary expectation? So imagine if um, someone said that, uh, okay, let me take the answer from you. Imagine if it was a company offering you a position that you're looking for and they ask you, what's your salary expectation? How will you answer this question? Open to all. Okay, tricky one, right? All right, let me be the interviewee. Imagine if I say, um, I am expecting, I'm quoting a figure, okay? I'm expecting uh, three lakhs to three and a half lakhs, for example. What do you think can be the next question? I'm expecting three to three and a half lakhs. What could be the next question? Yes, everybody. Based on your skills, are you sure about that? Okay, Ekta, good try. Remember, are you sure is a close-ended question. It can be a yes or a no. An interviewer may not ask you such close-ended questions. He or she might ask you open-ended where you need to give certain clarifications. So what do you think can be the question? I'm expecting three and a half to four lakhs. Yes. They may ask that this is a huge amount and mm -hmm. How do you feel you can be an asset for the company so that we pay you this much? Superb. Wonderful. So definitely justify why do you need this amount? What skill set? Ekta, I think you meant what skill set does the person have? You both are in absolute in line with what can be asked next. Whether you demand one rupee or you demand 100 rupees or you demand a lack of rupees, it's all about being able to justify why are you asking that much of money? How do you handle the salary expectations question? One, you get the salary expectation the moment you apply for the job or the moment the offer comes to you from the TNP department, you get to know the expected CTC. So please go ahead and mention about that, that as per the JD, this is what it is. 
if you don't know, if you have no idea, as a fresher, maybe you can just play around with that, you know, as uh, basis mic skill set or basis industry standards. Please remember the moment you quote a figure, if it's not in the scope that has been mentioned by the company, you will be able, you will be able to, uh, I mean, you will be asked about justifying. Please tell me why are you looking for this much of salary or why should I pay you that much? What skill sets do you have basis which I should pay you? If that was the question, what do you think we need to answer? What are the skill sets you have based on which I should give you that amount? What answer do you think will be the most appropriate at that time? Um, what should we focus on? Mm -hmm. We may tell them skills related to our profession, like if we are applying for HR, then we may tell skills like leadership and all, which are related to the field. Perfect. So remember, you don't tell them skills that are related to the field. You tell them skills that is related to the field and to you. That's when it becomes a match. It's not just about the field. It's about you having those qualities also. Because the moment you talk about the skill sets, imagine as an interviewee, I said, I have leadership skills, I have confidence, and I have good communication skills. If that was my answer. Again, boomerang. What could be the question, guys? Give We've done this in the previous one. Yeah. Give a past experience for leadership. Perfect. Perfect. So now you all are thinking in the right manner. Clear to everybody? Thumbs up. All clear. And we'll go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Great. So let's move ahead with the final one. Okay. What makes you give up on task? Imagine if this was a question asked. What makes you give up on task? Yes, yes, yes. Anybody? Lack of skills required for that particular task. Okay, lack of skills required. Sure. Anyone else? I mean, the value of the outcome starts. Uh, becoming organizational environment. Okay, just a second, one by one. So, when the value of the outcome completed, please. When the value of the outcome starts becoming not worth the effort. Okay, when your effort you versus your outcome is not worthy. Okay, somebody else was saying something. Yeah, I had heard another voice. Okay, let me take up these two answers. So one was when I don't have the skills. Second one was when the effort versus the result or the effort versus the outcome is not great. I'm putting in too much of effort, but I'm getting very low outcome. Great, I won't tell you right or wrong. Let's take the first one. When I don't have the required skill sets, I give up on task. If this is what I am telling to the interviewer myself about me, that I give up on task when I don't have the skill sets, what am I communicating to the interviewer? Lack of confidence. Not ready to learn. Mm -hmm. Resistance to learning. Not ready Perfect. to explore. Not thinking. You all are thinking now in the right direction. So here I have again dig up my own, uh, I won't say gray, but I've dig a hole in which I can really fall in. It's a pit that I have created for myself, a trap that I've created. Because here the interviewer will start doubting whether I am open to learning or not. Because the moment I say if I don't have the skill sets, I will give up. There are a lot of things that I don't know as a fresher, as a newcomer. I will have to have the learning attitude. Okay, on the other hand, when uh, another friend of yours said that uh, if the outcome or if the results are not as great as the effort, what am I telling to the interviewer by myself? Agar results acha nahi hai, to maybe agar bahut zada effort hai, if the results are not great, then I tend to give up on task. What am I communicating to the interviewer, guys? And maybe that energy and time can be redirected into something more valuable, a more valuable task and a more feasible task. Mm -hmm. 
great maybe we are right. maybe we are not willing to put more efforts into our work absolutely so see these kind of questions path. sorry choose the easy path and don't want to put the effort yeah yeah see you never would have thought about this also but what i'm trying to help you understand is think from the interviewer's perspective and then plan your answers because everything that you're giving out to them is getting correlated with your potential job even if you tell them i give up on tasks because i feel it's not required or you know when when it's not helpful for me i give up on task i am communicating a lot to the interviewers even if i you know a simple question like why did you choose this color why are you wearing what you're wearing that is your opportunity to impress the interviewer with a great answer i have heard people say things like oh this was kept in front of me so i wore it did that communicate any impression to your interviewer samne pada tha utha ke pehen liya did that communicate any impression yes ma'am that Versus, he or she mm-hmm. that he or, he or she was not concerned about the interview absolutely imagine versus an answer where i tell the interviewer that today is a very important day for me and this is my favorite shirt that i thought will be the best one for today same question different approach different impression remember no question from an interviewer is a stupid question every question is been said or asked so that they can get to know that inter view your internal view about yourself clear everybody about boomerang and tell her thumbs up okay perfect great great so remember everybody interview is about questions and answers where the interviewer asks you questions which is related to the potential job but please remember you have the control in an interview provided you keep the steering in your hand that means in the boomerang approach you plan your answers beforehand you plan your keywords which will lead you to the right one for example if i'm asked why this course and i want people i want the interviewers to start focusing on my competencies my skills my internship i can actually put that in my answer that as i'm pursuing my mba or during my bachelors i got the opportunity to work with abc company that has given me xyz skill sets what i have done is i have given the keywords of the company and my skills i can be very certain next question might come from any one of the two because i want the interviewer to ask me question about my internships so remember to give out keywords from where you want the question to come from right so this was about the first part that you must must understand before you go for your personal interviews this will help you to plan your approach towards your interviews better remember interview preparation doesn't happen on the seat in front of the interviewer it happens much before that it has to happen with you beforehand planning and preparing interview is all about it's all about a great hiring match where the interviewer tells you what they want and you showcase what you have question how do you know what the interviewer is looking for where can you find it what is that piece called where the information is given a uh, jd job description perfect so your jd your job description and your competencies your skill sets your Ready, strengths get it. where else sorry okay somebody said something which i couldn't understand no problem so your job description and your competencies your strengths your skill sets must match that is when a great hiring match happens up next i am going to show you some 10 tips 10 points that you must remember when you're practicing for your PIs okay here comes point number 1 remember everything you communicate everything that you communicate will be correlated to your prospective jobs 
we have seen an example of why did you wear this why a book why a bag of money etc everything that you're speaking in the head of the interviewer is getting connected with okay should i hire should i not hire this person that is what is happening if i in my interview go ahead and say that i um i like to stay aloof or i am an introvert i like to be by myself i like to not talk to too many people what am i communicating to the interviewer any guesses not clear that i lack social skills poor communication absolutely i lack social skills or i may not be great at teamwork because i like to be by myself i like to keep quiet be on my own any negative quality that we are sharing about ourselves is putting a question mark in the head of the interviewer whether should i hire this person should i not hire the person okay here i am a slow worker i take my time what do you think what are we communicating over time management over time management yeah. superb that means my time management will be a problem i will not be able to complete my work on time so remember guys everything that you're saying is getting correlated with your job your prospective job for which you are sitting there for the interview okay second one let's do it with an example imagine if the interviewer asks what is farm bill 2020 and the interviewee says doesn't know much so he tries to manage and says um it's a bill for farmers it will benefit them what impression are you creating of this person lack of general knowledge ma'am perfect and because this person has lack of general knowledge and pata nahi hai what the person wants to say but somehow manages that creates a big negative impression please remember guys you may not have answers to everything that your interviewer is asking you it is possible that you don't know something it can be your domain related it can be general knowledge related there is no problem in accepting it instead of bluffing please accept just say i'm sorry i don't know about it but i would love to read and come back to you if you don't know something tip number 1 confess nahi pata confess but display the learner's attitude say that i would love to read about it and come back okay that's tip number 1 crystal clear thumbs up all clear don't know confess okay perfect perfect number 2 okay point number 2 an interviewer asks what is your weakness okay what is your weakness and the interviewer says interviewee says oh i am a perfectionist what impression are you creating of this person confident high headed and over confident work on his <laughs> or her weaknesses no scope for yeah. better absolutely please remember guys this answers don't work they are very cliche answers they don't work anymore earlier i don't know why people would say that your weakness has to be a subset of your strength uh, don't show your weakness but no we all are humans we all have weaknesses if i have a weakness there is no point in share there's no harm in sharing that but remember just by sharing the weakness i have put the problem in to me and i have shown that in front of the interviewer support your weakness with a plan of action that is what is important i think somebody is unmuted if you all can unmute uh, get muted please so i'll not be able to hear the background noise i think akil if you can go on mute please great so remember guys everybody has weaknesses it's all about how you sharing that it could be that i'm not a great communicator i might feel that my communication needs to improve the way i can answer it is that while i was at my first year i realized i need to improve my on my communication so i have done 1 2 3 4 5 things i'm still improving 
Does it now sound like a weakness, everybody? Yes or no? My communication is an issue. I have started working on it by doing five activities. Is it now sounding like a weakness? No, ma'am. No. Perfect. No, ma'am. Now this it sounds like do. something you are working upon. Absolutely. The interviewer is asking you the weakness to know whether you are self-aware. Do you even know yourself? Number two, when you know yourself, what are you doing about it? So please don't give them bluff like I'm a perfectionist or, um, you know, there's nothing that I have that is a weakness in me. I am uh, super good. Don't give them such answers. Talk about a real problem that you had, but you are working to overcome it. Okay, that was tip number two. All clear? Thumbs up. We move ahead. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Tip three, everybody. Imagine if the interviewer asks for the second time, he asks, why should we hire you? Second time, same question. Interviewee says, I have already answered that question. What's the impression? <laughs> Negative, absolutely. Arrogance. It gives arrogance. Yeah, Pele Batabia, I have already shared that. Why are you asking me again? See, this is a tactics that a lot of interviewers apply. They might ask you the same question again and again just to test your consistency. So please do not become arrogant. Please remember that a bad attitude never gets hired. Experience or talent can never supersede bad attitude. I might hire a person with less experience but with great attitude. I may not go for a person with bad attitude but good experience. So your attitude really matters. Be humble and stay calm. I'm sure you've heard of this one phrase which says, you know, when there's a lot of fruits on the tree, when, a, when, a, when there's a tree with a lot of fruits, automatically it bows down. Humility comes with experience and you must show humility all times. So that's tip number three. Please don't lose control. Don't lose focus. Don't become um, bad in terms of your attitude. Please stay humble and please stay calm throughout the interview process. No matter if you're asked the same question again and again, it's a check to see whether you're consistent with your approach or not. Tip three clear? Everybody thumbs up. Tip three clear everyone. Super. Moving ahead. What is that one thing you would like to change about your college? Again, a trap question. It's putting you into a trap. What is that one thing you would like to change about your college? And the interviewee says, uh, ABC policy is very stringent. What am I communicating? Any idea? What am I communicating? The moment I said this policy is very strict. Yeah, go ahead. I have a problem with rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Lack of social adaptability, ma'am. Okay, lack of adaptability, perfect. Remember, change does not always mean negative. Change can be positive also. Why can't we use this question in a positive approach and talk about uh, maybe I would like to participate more in inter-college events. Or maybe, you know, we can host events like a TEDx or we can do Toastmasters in the college that may help us to grow better. What am I doing? Same question, different approach and a positive impression. Remember, don't ever, tip number four, don't bad mouth college, campus, employer, colleague, or anyone. Don't bad mouth them because the simple correlation is if you're doing a bad mouthing for your college, you will eventually go ahead and bad mouth the company. So stay neutral, focus on the learning or focus on the brighter side. This is a question where you can create a positive impression instead of creating a negative impression. All clear, then thumbs up, everyone. Clear. Perfect. Thank you so much. Tip number five, I'm sure you have had multiple sessions in the past or you keep understanding this one important thing. 
a lot of hiring happens online, especially your LinkedIn. Whenever you have the time, sign out of all your devices on the browser. Sign out of your Facebook, uh, you know, messengers, and your LinkedIn and everywhere. Sign it out, delete history. Then just go on Google and search your name and see what all appears. There could be links from your social media that will appear. Ensure that it's cleaned. There is no, nothing um, derogatory that you're tagged to. There is no foul language that is used. There are no um, different posts that you're tagged to. Please remove them because that adds to your negative image and negative impression. So clean up your social image. That is very, very important. Please do it, especially on LinkedIn. Even when you comment on somebody's profile, maybe a political post or maybe a post where, you know, somebody says that, uh, I remember this one guy who had uh, posted a comment on somebody's picture, which says the only way to survive in a corporate world is to um, butter your boss. And the person went ahead and liked it and said, you are absolutely right. Did that create an impression on me as a viewer? Yes, no? Yes, no. It did create an impression on me. I started feeling that, okay, this is how the thought process of the person is. That if you want to survive, then probably you'll have to butter your boss. So please understand your consent. The like button, the clap button, the thumbs up, the hearts, whatever acknowledgement means your consent. You agree with it. So please do not go ahead and have any such posts, any such likes, any such comments, because your interviewers are watching you on that social space of yours. It's not just your social media. It's a social media which gives out information to your interviewers. All clear? Then thumbs ups, everybody. Tip five, clear, clear. Okay, superb. Tip number six, very, very, very important. Please scan through your resume. Whenever you're going for an interview, scan through because you don't know what keywords you have mentioned. Please read it through. If you've mentioned things like adaptability in your strengths, ensure you have enough examples to support yourself because the interviewer might look at your resume and ask you a question out of it. So scan through your resume, prepare the possible questions versus the keywords you have shared. In the objective, I don't know if you guys follow the objective, but uh, it's of course something that has been old traditionally. Now a lot of colleges don't have it in the format. But if you have mentioned a couple of things there, please ensure you have something to justify it. Work on the keyword and check if you have any errors on the resume. Please fix them. I remember seeing a resume which was downloaded, I think, from some application. And, uh, you know, you have these Latin Spanish words when you download a format. I only saw the picture of the person, the name of the person, rest everything was in that language. So what might have happened, I don't know, but I'm guessing that maybe the person downloaded it, saved the name, forgot to change everything else, or maybe changed everything, but forgot to save the file. And that file reached me. Straight away, I only did a shift delete. No questions, right? So please scan through your resumes before you go for an online interview, a face-to-face -face interview, or even you attach it and send it, please go through it. Clear, everybody? Thumbs ups, if it's clear. Yeah? Okay. Tip number seven, everybody. Research these four very, very important areas. Anytime you go for an interview, please research yourselves. What are my competencies, my techniques? Uh, what is my experience? What are things that I like, I dislike? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Research. Research about the organization that you're going for. Research the job description, what can be asked, and research the domain. You're applying for HR, marketing, accounting, whatever streams you're applying for. What is the current trends that is going on? That's tip number seven. I'll move ahead. Tip number eight, please do a role reversal. Whenever you're asked a question, when you're preparing, think, why is an interviewer asking me this question? 
what does he or she want me to share ask yourself this if i'm asked uh, what's your strength what does he want to know maybe he wants to know about my competencies how clear i am about myself if he or she asks me which location are you open to relocate to maybe he or she wants to know about my flexibility my adaptability this will help you to prepare well that's tip number 8 for you everybody tip number 9 whenever you are doing a pi please remember especially virtually look at the camera okay i'm putting my finger on the camera for you to understand look at the camera not on the screen that will help you to make the eye contact use your hand gestures while talking speak clearly be audible in rush in nervousness we tend to overlook our pauses ensure that you have pauses in place sip water because the throat gets clogged when you sip water it helps you to relax and please listen to the question before answering one important tip always remember to write and practice before the interview a lot of times we feel we'll be able to manage with nervousness everything moves out of our head we can't remember what we practiced but when you write and practice that stays with you the writing the processing stays with you even if you forget you'll be able to remember something or the other you will be able to recollect last but not the least a lot of times i'm being asked ma'am what is the right answer to this question what should i answer that should make me um, that makes me get the job and i have always said students that there is no right answer there is no wrong answer it's all about this first c confidence second c clarity third c consistency and the fourth c very very important is common sense you apply these four and your answer becomes the right answer so that's all that i wanted to share with you through the ppt through this uh, session and i would love to do some practice i think i've taken more time than expected but i would love to do some practice rounds with you and uh, yeah we can take it forward from there so can we do some practice round everybody if you all are giving me a thumbs up ma'am can, yes, can please. i speak yeah thank you yeah, so yeah, much sure. yeah that's a lovely session but i have a couple of doubt to ask like it is in line so i would ask one being a very common question that you know goes forward that at the very start tell me about yourself right and it somehow is a very intimidating question you read wherever you see one thing somebody says that you know your uh, your answer should be very smart ones or quirky ones some say that you somehow brief the resume some say like ask the interviewer what they have read on your cv and what they are looking for to know so like how how to answer that that's first and second uh, we most of it tend to see and read and even hear from people that you know you ask about the person about the organization value or ask question before leaving so what what is the implication there can you elaborate thank you great question ayush the so i'll take the first one first you said tell me something about yourself how many of you feel it's a mechanical question puchna hai isliye puchte hain it's supposed to be asked that's why people ask how many of you feel thumbs up or hands up is it a mechanical question that it's asked okay lot of people thumbs up and hands up okay yeah this is the biggest problem that we have we feel that tell me something about yourself question is asked because it's supposed to be asked but my dear friends no it's a question that helps you to channelize your discussion in that question tell me something about yourself uh think of it like a product okay imagine if you're going to buy a cell phone imagine if you're going to buy something what do you want to know about it you want to know about the features of it you want to know the benefits you want to know the advantages i'm sure you've heard of this technique called fab f a b features advantages benefits that's what you do in your tell me something about yourself you channelize the discussion towards make your education uh, education history very short maybe you can just start with your current qualification and your current location don't get into my father is from here my mother is from here 
this is what my father does this is what my brother does not needed it's tell me something about yourself which will make you get interested in you to listen to you further because that question decides whether the interviewer wants to listen to you further or wants to stop you so please remember to focus on your advantages advantage in the sense where am i doing my education from what are the skills that i have learned how has it helped me what courses have i done where am i interning what projects have i done try to put all of this together because that question is your deciding question of whether the interviewer wants to continue whether the interviewer gets interested and that is also a boomerang question because the information you get from there next question gets formed are you did that help for the first one uh yeah thanks thank you so much okay second question was what should i ask before exiting right it's always says uh, the interviewer always asks do you have any questions for us a lot of students say no sir no no ma'am that's it that's your extra chance of spending some extra time with your interviewer through which you can impress him or her maybe you can ask him or her things like um one could be that how is my performance going to be evaluated this is a standard answer that you'll see on google that makes the interviewer feel that you're interested towards the job please don't ask my feedback that is not the right place don't ask salary that is not the right place because it's already mentioned in the jd don't ask when can i join that's a lot of desperation you can ask about the person recommendation sir or ma'am would you like to recommend any courses to me that can help me to grow myself further show your positive attitude instead of your negative attitude are your second question clear yeah yeah thank you okay perfect yes please so can we do some practice yeah there's another hand raised to shar yes tell me okay i saw hand raised there yeah if you can help me or anybody from the placement uh, cell can help me uh, i'd like to intervene here for a minute i think the students the question answer session will be there at the end please uh, like you know you can collect your questions and ask them at the end let's not break into that right now thanks sure ma'am thank you so much okay now what i want to do is quick 5 minutes or let's say 5 10 minutes let's have a couple of people who can do the practice session with me the way we go about is i ask you a question and you go ahead and answer that question for me this is the tips that i have shared with you or whatever comes to your mind let's try and hear your responses because remember your responses will help you to understand how to shape it further yeah so my first question that i'm going to ask it's open to all whoever wants to answer can put up the hand and you can unmute and speak the first question for you all is which location are you open to relocate to imagine if this was a question by the interviewer who would like to answer it open to all and remember there's no right or wrong practicing it here will help you to get better there in your final interviews so yes anyone anyone yeah nikhil go ahead yeah nikhil unmute okay i think i can't hear nikhil maybe we can go with pratham pratham go ahead Yes, ma'am. I would like to reloc relocate to Chandigarh, ma'am. Okay, why, Pratham? Ma'am, I have been to Chandigarh for a trip, and I lived at my relative's house there. Ma'am, the environment there was much better than Delhi, and we see that it is much more developed, like Delhi. We have shopping malls, we have better connectivity, and everything better like Delhi, ma'am. Okay, great try, Pratham. Claps for you, guys. Anything that you noticed in the tip that I had shared, which was correlating here, 
or let me make it simple for you everybody when pratham said state he lives in yeah that how good pratham dekho this was a trap again you don't have to increase somebody's worth by decreasing somebody's worth this is not just for pratham but this is for everybody guys you don't have to say this product is better than that product because that product is bad talk about this product now why do you want to degrade the other product same way delhi kharab hai you don't have to say that you can just say chandigarh is better i like chandigarh because of 1 2 3 4 5 reasons got the point everybody thumbs up if you understood it yes ma'am okay great great another thing please be very sure of not choosing a city the moment i say i want to go to a delhi i want to relocate to a chennai i want to relocate to this location i am showing that i'm not open to other locations you can actually say things like i'm absolutely fine with any location if you give me a preference then it will be this city first of all it's important for you to show the attitude to be adaptable one question shows so many things to your interviewers i hope you all are able to now think a little deeper okay next question open to all whoever wants to speak can unmute and share the question is um, why shouldn't we hire you listen to the question carefully okay why shouldn't we hire you okay pratham has raised hand again i'll hold on pratham let's see if anybody else wants to speak come on everybody there's no right and wrong and i'm telling you you practice here you will get better anyone else come on okay this i'm not able to see who raised yeah ronak go ahead i'm because i'm a hard working person and i'm willing to learn and relearn things so i should not hire you pratham uh, ronak Did you hear the question, Rana? My question was why I should not hire you because you're hard working and you're ready to learn and unlearn and relearn. Should I not hire you, or was that your answer for should I hire you? Sorry, I'm interrupting. No problem. See, listening skills. Okay, somebody else also raised the hand. Yes, please. Unmute and share. Ma'am, may I? Sure, please go ahead. Ma'am, as a fresher, I have more, less experience, but I am open to uh, learn new things and gain more experience in the corporate world. Okay. Good try. Anyone else? I see some more hands raised. Yes. Ma'am, may I? Ma'am, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, ma'am uh, i feel personally uh, i get bored of things very easily that does not interest me i think that might be uh, a drawback when it comes to choosing me and if that's something that the company is looking for consistency uh, is there but the constant zeal is not present if the company wants a candidate who possesses constant zeal then i think i'm not the right fit but whereas my other qualities are concerned i think uh, i am very determined and possess leadership quality so if the former is the company's priority then i do believe i'm not the right fit for the job okay kushi thank you so much we are not hired is that okay yes ma'am you just gave reasons you just gave reasons to your interviewers to not hire you imagine going to a shopping mall and asking about the product and the salesman tells you madam ye product mein ye defect hai ye defect hai ye defect hai can you buy it yes no no ma'am you just gave out a very very important thing that the interviewer looks for you told the interviewer that you're not consistent or maybe uh, there were two words that you said consistency and something else uh, ma'am the zeal to work right okay. 
I'm sure you didn't think about it, Kushi. It just came to your mind as you were speaking, isn't it? Absolutely, ma'am. That's what happens to us during the interview, also, and we fall into the big, big trap that we lay down for ourselves. Guys, don't put your weaknesses on your platter. Don't serve it to your interviewer. That way, you'll never get hired. Remember, very, very important. Why shouldn't I hire you? Is a trap. Don't fall into it. Yeah, Simran, you've been raising your hand. Tell me. Uh, ma'am, if the company is specifically looking for X, Y, Z skills, I believe I'm uh, not a fit for the same. But I am ready to work on uh, the X, Y, Z skill. Yeah. Great, great. That's a positive outlook. Okay, sort of. Yeah, go ahead. Saurabh Rohit, you raised your hand. Ma'am, it's like uh, so. I'll say, if you find someone better than me according to your consciousness, then I already stands out. Rohit, ऐसा बिल्कुल मत करना, okay? Don't say things like as per your consciousness at all, because it might get your interviewer very angry. Because you know, you you're putting the thing that. You decide if if your conscience allows you to pick up somebody else, pick him up. Don't do that. Talk about yourself. So everybody, the tip to handle this question is: please understand why shouldn't I hire you? Forget about the shouldn't. Talk about why should you hire me? Okay. So things like maybe you can say things like I possess A B C quality that Ronak had shared, but what Ronak forgot to do was close the loop. i have abc qualities which makes me hireable and i as for the jd this is what you require so i don't see a reason why i shouldn't be hired you talk about i you don't talk about you you hire me because you will not find the right person clear everybody how can you handle this question thumbs up if it's clear with you ma'am yes please there was a answer in my mind it was yeah, ma'am i find it was ma'am i find no reasons but you are at a better position to know these reasons can i say this ma'am or this will be also uh, be negative pratham first part is correct second second part thoda sa wo ho gaya that you know you will not find a reason don't don't use words like you decide you do it because it sounds uh, a little rude maybe you can say things like you can you can say that you know i have this this experience and according to me i feel i should be hired aap apne bare mein baat karo उनके बारे में नहीं क्लियर यस मैम परफेक्ट ग्रेट सो यू आर डूइंग गुड लेट्स प्रैक्टिस वन मोर एंड देन आई विल टेक अप योर क्वेश्चंस अम इमेजिन इफ यू डोंट गेट सिलेक्टेड व्हाट्स योर अल्टरनेटिव प्लान इफ यू डोंट गेट सिलेक्टेड टुडे व्हाट्स योर अल्टरनेट प्लान हां प्रथम इज गोइंग प्रथम ऑल द टाइम ओके एवरीवन एल्स I'll I'll listen to your answer also, Pratham. Just waiting for anybody else. Imagine if you don't get sel get selected today, what is your alternate plan? Yeah, Gaurav. First of all, I will analyze myself. that uh, what you said i did in the interview and i will work on that uh, i will work on deep skills also make myself the better person who i am today to be the best version of myself and uh, that's it all right super that was a good one to uh, gorov nikhil let's hear from you also uh ma'am actually this question was asked for me in an interview so i stated my personal reason that if i won't get selected for army uh, i will go for teaching and i'm pursuing be english honors so i will uh, prepare for teaching job okay great that's a good one uh, ashutosh yes ma'am i'll work on my skills and i will try to pass the interview next time All right, good, good. Ranjit, yes.
apply for the same bilkul so wonderfully said uh, pratham go ahead now i wanted to say that i will analyze my weaknesses where i lacked and i will take up some courses or any coaching so as to develop those skills great okay everybody that's a good one um remember you, okay nikhil also raised his hand go ahead nikhil uh ma'am i want to answer the question that you asked before that why shouldn't we select you so i would like to answer that uh, i find myself myself suitable for the job but if you find anyone uh, more compatible than me then uh, it is his chance to go and i should try next time okay theek hai nikhil again going back to the same question please do not go ahead and put the ball in the interviewer's court keep it with yourself don't talk about they selecting somebody else talk about why you should get selected okay nikhil so your answer in the first part was correct second part you can chop off okay three now okay. to all of your answers which said what will you do if you don't get selected remember again is a trap that question can be just asked to you to check your confidence because the moment you go ahead and say that i will work on myself i will take up a course i will learn i will uh, maybe polish one two three four skills of mine you are actually telling the interviewer that you don't have those skills or those skills are missing in you the way you can handle this question is by saying that as per um, as per my understanding i feel i will get hired however in case i don't then i will go ahead and do one two three four five six things that you guys have shared first share a confident line second you talk about what you guys have said clear everybody thumbs up if all clear good okay yeah simran you want to say something uh ma'am actually i wanted to ask can i um, answer this question like maybe i can associate my skills to the company's uh, um, requirements in this question as well can i do that yes why not yes yes absolutely that as per the jd this is what is requested and this is what i have so i feel that uh, i am the best suitable however in case i don't get hired xyz is what i would like to do yeah samran yeah thank Great. you ma'am okay most welcome good so big round of applause for all of you for trying and practicing we've been able to cover a lot of questions together you know this is a never ending topic i can sit for hours and i can talk to you all about pis and uh, we can definitely help you get better but maybe at some other time and space but one thing for sure whatever you have learned in this short time if you can start applying it please don't think like candidates start thinking like interviewers it will help you to crack your next pi immediately but that needs a lot of practice i am open to questions that you might have and then i will hand it over to the team to take it forward yeah any questions guys that you might have ma'am so sorry to interrupt but before we move forward can we please formally thank you and set up the floor for questions if that's okay with you obviously yes yes sure please yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh, i can't imagine a better end to the three day camping i'm sure that this session would help many students to be in the right direction and everyone must have gained an ample amount of knowledge including me uh, now it's time to take up questions of course uh, i would like to invite my fellow member brinda uh, who is also the mediator and uh, she will be telling you about the questions and of course you uh, will be giving the suitable answers i request you all to please stay calm and let the previous question be completed before raising the before raising another one ahead over to you rinda thank you so much khushi before i proceed with the q and a round i request all the participants to switch on their camera for a quick virtual photo session Uh, guys we have allowed your videos now you could switch on your cameras as well uh, 
I still don't have access to my camera. Everyone has been allowed to share. You can check. So everyone smile as usual. Done, done. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. So, well, we have been receiving great responses over our social media handles. I'm sure everyone must be eager to know the answer to their question. So without any delay, let's proceed towards the questions. You all can raise your hands to ask questions. We will unmute you once all the questions are done from our side. So ma'am, our first question will be, if the interviewer asks the question and I know that, but because of pressure and nervousness, I am not able to remember that, then how to tackle that situation? OK, that's a brilliant question. Thank you so much, Brinda. I will say, how do you tackle that situation? The first thing is you have to do a planning beforehand. With practice, what will happen is you'll be able to stay calm and you'll know, OK, this, this situation can happen. Your practice will help you to calm down. Let's say in the situation, you are in front of the interviewer and you're frozen. You're not able to think. Maybe what you can do is you can ask for a glass of water or you can just say, sir, can you give me a few seconds to think about it? There is no harm in showing that you want a little time before answering. But remember, you can only do it once. Don't do it multiple times. Otherwise, it will tell your interviewer that you're not prepared for the interview. I hope that helps. Yes, ma'am. I will always remember that. So moving towards the next question. If I am not fluent in English speaking, is there any chance that I will get placed in corporates? Uh, if it's a yes and no, I will say a yes. See, not all jobs require fluent communication. But if you look at a life skill, if you look at not just getting a job, but able to sustain and able to move ahead, communication is a very important skill set. If you know that you're not great at communication, please start working on it. There are a lot of things that we realize we are not good at. Lockdown must have taught you how to cook also. I am guessing you would have learned it. So the moment you know that you're not good at it, just by saying I'm not good at it does not help. Start putting in inputs, take up courses, start speaking. I'm sure it will help you a lot. Stay confident. If you don't have the skill set, you can get hired in a job which doesn't have communication as a major skill set. But to get that likelihood, that possibility is a little lower. So start working on it. You can always mention that as your weakness that you're trying to overcome. Sure, ma'am. So our next question is, sometimes the interviewer expects to hear something which is not written in our CV, like other than knowledge, past experience, achievement, etc. Then how to answer the same? Brilliant one. In fact, this can be a question where an interviewer says, tell me something that's not there on your CV. This is a lot of times interviews ask you this question. Now, here is a chance for you to create another positive impression on the interviewer. Talk about a real life situation that you faced that has helped you to become who you are today. Or maybe talk about a challenging situation that you could overcome. So focus on the positive direction and maybe you can talk about a skill set that you have learned and internship experience through which you gained. These could be included. Yes, ma'am. Now. You all can also raise your hands to ask questions. We will unmute you once and you can ask your questions one by one. OK, so. Simran Rati, you can ask your question. Oh, yeah, thank you, Vrinda. Ma'am, actually, I have one question. Sometimes when we have already appeared for an interview, 
we do not get any sort of uh, notification regarding the results about the interview so in that case what should be uh, done like uh, should we drop in an email for a follow up or if you're dropping an email what should all be mentioned in that email if you're doing that sure sidran a great question there are two parts to it one you're applying from the college the opportunity has come from your placement cell to you so please remember not to directly interact with your uh, with your expected employer or your prospective employer let your tnp department take it up because the moment you do it by yourself you're breaching protocol so that can be followed if it's an internal one according to me let's say you're applying by yourself and you've not heard any form of communication it's always important for you to wait for some time you know these days we have information on the on our fingertips we expect communication also like that please give your interviewers at least 24 to 48 hours minimum after that maybe you can just drop in a polite email or a polite message saying that uh, uh, this is my communication email i am mentioning it just in case you've sent out an information and i haven't received you know something like that in a politer form instead of saying send me the inputs yeah i hope that helped sinrin oh yes ma'am thank you so much so most welcome next tushar gupta you can also ask your question uh, good evening ma'am uh, ma'am as you told that there is no right or wrong answer so uh, we know that we have to maintain professionalism in interview but to, uh, there are some times like to like you gave us a uh, question that uh, what will you choose a bag of money or a bag of books so maybe i get uh, you know very professional and i answer a bag of books but if i go like uh, you know honestly and straight forwardly i may answer a bag of money so you know according to you what should be you know like the person stage like a person should be more truthful or straight forward or more professional because if i get more professional i might get stuck in a loop of lies and if i you know maybe my get real honest i you know may uh, get a bad <laughs> at a little you know bad in on the interview okay so sir i understand your question now first of all i want you to clear off your head everybody by thinking that choosing money is bad it's not a problem if you choose money if it's it's not absolutely a problem if you choose books there is no context of being professional or being true it's absolutely fine if you want to choose money provided you can justify it in the subsequent questions that why did you choose money over books maybe i can talk about an important thing that i want to do with that money maybe i want to go for a particular course maybe i want to spend that money to pay off my education loan maybe there's something else i am able to justify myself it's not necessary that i have to choose books because books makes me sound more professional no that's why i said no right no on wrong answer it's all about common sense consistency confidence and clarity so you can choose books you can choose money absolutely fine but my point to all of you is whatever choices you're making don't just think of that answer think of subsequent boomerangs that can happen post that answer did that help the shot Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Pratham, now you can go ahead with your question. Yes, ma'am. I ma'am, mean, sometimes in interviews we are asked a series of questions in one go, like what is your name, what is your educational background, tell me about your hobbies, and ma'am, it is very difficult at that time to memorize those questions. So, ma'am, can we simply ask them to repeat the questions, or what should we do? what should be our approach to that right uh, sometimes it does happen interviewer shoots questions at you and you can't remember kya kya pucha tha uh, i would say a good way to remember is it when the interviewer is speaking just keep a note of the keywords name hobby uh, strengths this is the three things that i want to share start with your answer in case you forget maybe you can handle yourself smartly instead of showing those question marks on your head for example if an interviewer asks me tell me your name your location your hobbies your strengths and uh, once maybe one one experience one positive life experience five things in one go i can't remember all the five things that he has asked me maybe i start with two things 
and then I can show myself smartly instead of showing that I've forgotten. Maybe I can just ask the person, sir, could you repeat the other two things, please? That's fine. But if I do it every time, that becomes a problem. Pratham, did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Now, Rona Gupta, you can ask your question. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, ma the question, the question you've asked uh, to choose either of the two, money or the books. Um, what if I go the other way and deny both of them? And say that this is uh, I'll go the other way. Will I sound rude, ma'am, in this case? Uh, if I have a uh, so what do you want to do? Let's say if you deny both, then it could be okay. Then what do you do? There's a crossroad, one or two. Then what do you do? You just keep standing. Um, if it is a crossroad, I'll be choosing one of them. Otherwise, I'll be saying that. Uh, I, Ma'am, if I am out of my house, it is on a purpose. <laughs> so I'll be completing that purpose and not taking either of them. Maybe. Okay. That's fine. I think it depends on how you're communicating, Ron. Like I said, remember the tone plays a very important uh, part of your communication. If you can say it with the right tone, it will not sound condescending or uh, it won't sound degrading. So it's absolutely fine. Why not? But remember, to get prepared for that boomerang. That is more important. Yeah, Ronak? Thank you. Thank you. Most welcome. Very well explained, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering all the questions with so much patience. I think we have completed all our questions. We are sharing a feedback form with you all, and everybody is requested to fill the form. If anyone is left with their query, please mention it while filling up the feedback form. We will surely revert to you. Now, I would like to request the convener of the placement cell, Dr. Jayata Thakur, ma'am, to formally thank everyone. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Brenda. So first of all, on the behalf of the placement cell of Shivaji College, I'd like to extend a real heartfelt thanks to our speaker of the day, Ms. Neelul Jain. This was a really interactive and informative session. I'm sure every one of the students really gained a lot from here as to the common mistakes they make, which you know there you kind of uh, block them off and even so, so it was repeated so in that sense they should have got it drummed into the head as to what not to say so that was a really good session thank you so much for this and uh, with this we close our three-day session on make your impact 2.0 and I'm sure our students have learned through the resume building session, through the GD session, through the personal interview today. I'm sure they have uh, really learned a lot, which will help them land their dream jobs. And uh, I would also like to thank our principal, sir, for his constant motivation and uh, which always, you know, keeps us on our feet and uh, to help our students. I would also like to thank my placement team because it is their hard Hard work, constant hard work throughout the year that, you know, helps us bring various programs suited to our students and of course the recruitment drives and particularly the students. They are the backbone constantly working. So with that, I'd like to bring this session to a close. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear participants. Thank you, Neelu Thanks. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys have been amazing. We can definitely stay in touch and stay connected if you can follow us on Emerge Finishing School or my personal handle as well on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Reta Ma'am. Thank you, Principal Sir. And thank you to the entire placement set. Thank you.